Welcome to How to Play by Cat House Gaming, where our goal is to explain the key game mechanics needed to get you and your table mates playing. We know you'd rather be gaming, so let's get started. Hey guys, today we're learning how to play games from the Century Trilogy. Each game uses similar iconography and features different core game mechanics. Spice Road introduces deck building, Eastern Wonders pick up and deliver, and A New World showcases worker placement. The Century games are fantastic in that they can be played as standalone games as well as combined with each other. This video is focused on the third and final game in the Century Trilogy, A New World. You can find links to how to play the other Century games in the description below. In Century A New World, as well as each of the other Century games, players are goods traders looking to be the most successful of all of the traders. Game end is triggered when a player has collected eight victory point cards. The current round is finished, and so everyone has an equal number of turns. Victory points are earned by possessing victory point cards, bonus tiles, and having non-yellow cubes remaining in their caravan. The player with the most points wins. Form a 2x2 two two grid with the board game pieces. Find A1 and place it in the upper left quadrant, place B1 in the upper right quadrant, and C1 in the lower left quadrant. Randomly or selectively pick another board piece from the three remaining and place it with side one face up in the lower right quadrant. The remaining boards can be returned to the box. Take all of the victory point cards and remove the ones with the white star. Additionally, remove anything that does not fit your player count. So in a three player game, remove anything marked as equals four. All removed cards can be returned to the box. Shuffle the remaining cards and place four of them face up along the top of the newly created board. Place the remainder face down to the right of the face up cards. Remove the bonus tiles marked with Roman numerals 1 and 3 and return them to the box. Shuffle the remaining tiles face down and place the appropriate number onto the top of the board in stacks as indicated on the board. This means 4 on the leftmost column, 3 on the second from the left, and 2 each on the remainder. Shuffle all of the exploration tiles face down and place them onto the board positions with the same symbol while keeping in mind the player count. So in a four player game, the space marked with 2-3 remains uncovered. Place the goods into their respective bowls and align them near the game board in descending order. Brown at the top of the board, then green, red, and finally yellow. We'll continue to refer to the goods by their color, but please know that thematically, brown represents fur, green tobacco, red meat, and yellow corn. Provide each player with a player board and either use the start player symbol on the board or randomly determine the start player. The start player takes three yellow cubes as their starting supply and places them into their caravan on the right side of their board. The second and third players would take four yellow cubes. The fourth player takes three yellow cubes and one red cube. Each player takes all of the meeples of their selected player color. In a three or a four player game, they place six of their meeples onto their player board and set the rest aside as a supply. In a two-player game, they take a seventh meeple and place it on their board. Beginning with the start player, each player can choose to place meeples onto a specific location on the main board and perform the action shown, or they rest, which returns all of their meeples from the main board onto their personal board. Once a player has completed their chosen action, play passes to the player on their left who has the exact same options. When a player decides to perform an action by placing meeples onto a specific board location, the player must place the number of meeples as indicated by the space, minus any discounts they may have from victory point cards. But players are always required to place a minimum of one meeple. There are two additional placement rules. Players cannot place on unexplored tiles or on tiles occupied by their own meeples. Players can displace another player's meeples by paying one additional meeple over what that player already has on that space. There are four types of locations available on the main board. Production, Upgrade, Trade, and Fort. Forts line the topmost row of the board. We'll come back to this row. Production locations allow the player to obtain one or more goods. The second row of the board contains several examples. In the leftmost space, a player must send one meeple in order to receive two yellow cubes. In the same row, at the rightmost space, the player must send three meeples in exchange for one brown cube. Upgrade locations allow the player to perform a certain number of upgrades. In the case of the upgrade space on B1, the player can upgrade twice. This means that a player can upgrade two resources one time each, so two yellow becomes two reds, 
or one resource two times, so a yellow becomes a red and then finally a green. The trade locations allow players to convert one or more cubes into different cubes as depicted on the location. Look for the arrow on the location. One or more cubes will be depicted, then a down arrow, and then one or more cubes of a different color. For example, a single brown cube may be turned into two green cubes with a correct location. There is no limit as to how many goods may be traded when the location is visited, providing the player has the required resources to trade and the capacity to hold the received goods in their caravan, they can convert using the location multiple times. Caravan space is limited to 10 cubes. Last, but certainly not least, are the forts. Forts line the top row of the board and are where players can obtain victory point cards as well as bonus tiles. When a player sends meeples to a fort, the player has three options. They can exchange cubes in order to obtain a victory point card, take a bonus tile, or take one of each. In the case of victory point cards, each card has a certain number and type of resources depicted on the bottom of the card. Once a player has these resources available, they can visit the fort and exchange them for the victory point card. There are four types of victory point cards which offer different immediate and ongoing bonuses. New Settler, Exploration, Native Help, and Tool. New Settler is depicted by a leather bag. New Settler cards allow the player to obtain one or more meeples from their personal supply. These meeples go onto their personal game board and are available immediately. The compass signifies exploration. When an exploration card is claimed, the player immediately removes an exploration tile from the main game board and places it near their personal board. These tiles may provide an immediate bonus of cubes or meeples, or they may help in endgame scoring. The space it was occupying on the main game board is now available. Native help cards are identified by a dream catcher. Native help provides ongoing discounts when placing meeples onto spaces with the depicted symbol. For example, if the victory point card depicts shaking hands, then a player who possesses the card needs to place one fewer meeple when visiting the different trade locations. Remember, players must always place at least one meeple onto the board even when using these bonuses. The last type of victory point card is called tool and is portrayed by the image of a hammer. Tool cards grant the player additional resources when they visit a location with the same symbol as depicted on the card. For example, one might receive an extra yellow cube when visiting a space with a corn symbol. Once a player has collected eight victory point cards, the current round will finish and scoring begins. Each player sums the points listed on the bottom of their victory point cards. Next, they add the value of their bonus tiles by summing the earned victory points for the sets they obtained. Lastly, incorporate the value of any exploration tiles that provide victory points and add one point for each non-yellow cube remaining in their caravan. The player with the most points wins. When selecting victory point cards, consider the bonus offered by the card. It can be extremely helpful to get additional resources or discounts at the different locations on the board. Whenever possible, try to convert multiple resources during a turn. For example, when you place your meeple onto the space that enables you to convert one red cube into three yellow cubes, try to convert two or three cubes instead of just one. Economy of action counts in this game, as does always having available cubes. Be selective in picking up bonus tiles. You're only gonna get three. Try to pick one up early in the game and use it as a focus for selecting point cards going forward, or collect a few victory point cards and then select bonus tiles based on the icons you've already collected. That's a wrap. You now know how to play Century A New World. Go forth and may the best trader win.